was there a lot of pressure during those res residencies because you you had a week kind of to to, to come up with a show? Yeah, I mean, I mean, actually, that that the, that first one in Finland was the was the one that was was the difficult one because mm -hmm. then when we went into the second the second one we we already had the material from the first one so we were in right. a way just building we kept building on the on the on the foundation of some sort mm. and so and the and so we it the pressure kind of got a little I think we got a little bit more lazy maybe <laughs> like we <laughs> because we were like you know we've got the six songs so you know we right. only have to make four <laughs> so I think we made four <laughs> in Berlin um, so yeah it, I think that the unique experience in a way of our meeting with that was like um, that was the, f the, the, the first meeting and, and I think in, in looking at the record we now um, uh, are going to put out is um, it's like four residencies and it's I think it's for me it's it's interesting to think of that that four of the songs on that record out of ten is, is from the first okay. uh, from the first residency so I think mm. I think that one just kind of had a little bit more knife on the throat Sure. And um, and uh, and but but not to I think the the rest of the the, the residencies have have something different. It's yeah, just absolutely. That it's, everything uh, has something. Yeah. something it's like something refined different. in a way. It's like you know you're cutting the you know you're cutting something in the field. You know, and it's mm -hmm. and then you start refining, and it's a, they're very different. It's a very different kind of craft in a yeah. way like har harvesting different kind of hay yeah <laughs> first it's this green grass and then a dried yeah. uh, kind of crop and then it's a jungle mm -hmm. where you have to use a jungle knife yeah. and the last one is a big trees with motor and same yeah, chainsaw yeah. Totally so you yeah. have to kind of it's a different tool for different <laughs> for, yeah, a different job <laughs> target, yeah. Yeah. when you were in Finland during that residency was it was there maybe a song that kind of clicked where, where you felt okay this is the direction where we're going in what, because you said that was the kind of the initial thing and 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 then four of those songs ended up on uh, mm. what no, the thing was yeah. more like well which song could that, have been the, like okay so sorry can you repeat the, 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 the was there a song because uh, the residency in Finland was the first one was there a song that kind of uh, for function as a catalyst for, for what became, yeah. come, came after? Yeah, I, I think to me like somehow I mean, it, it's funny that the, there's this opening track of the album Your Heart mm -hmm. that uh, that's one of the only songs now that has some kind of acoustic object mm -hmm. and we used to call it weed jar it was a like glass jar that has a like tin lid and like has this, it's uh, like blown glass, old glass, so it has really like nice tone when you mm -hmm. play it with your fingertips. And uh, it had some nettles, dried nettles in and looked like weed. That's why it was called weed. It's like one, 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 like one of the objects that, that Tatsu brought to the, yeah. to the, to the uh, residences yeah. was this, this, this weed jar, jar from yeah. his dad's kitchen. So, yeah. so it became like the song like was an from instrument. That. And this kind of focus point of the song in a way. So that was treated electronically, but it's a visual element. It's a kitchen jar, and mm -hmm. like everybody recognizes that in, in some way, like as an everyday object. And then, uh, so that song to me was one of those like quite strong songs mm -hmm. and combining many elements in, in Lima's music that's both rhythmical and kind of like. Uh, it's sort of mid-tempo song, but you can dance to it, and then it, at the same time it has this really like sort of a deep melodic quality to it. It's quite airy and mm -hmm. raw at the same time. Yeah. It's really dynamic and colorful. So, so like it, in that sense, um, like that was one of the four four songs out of six that ended up in the album. Mm -hmm. And and oh, I think it's a good example. I think that yeah. song. There's elements in that songs that we just did a residency in London actually, which okay. is even though the album is finished, we try to kind of keep going okay. with making new music. Mm -hmm. But um, but I was just reminded like we used a kind of a vocal effect thing, which is it's becoming a little bit technical. But uh, while um, Tattoo is playing this wheat jar, uh, it kind of triggers through a microphone. It triggers my vocal effects, and so it becomes this kind of like slightly can I west kind of mm. thing that is Out happening on top yeah. but um, um, 
so so that thing like that I like that just that, that little uh, idea came out of the, that first song in, in the in the summer cottage and that um, we just we just applied that thing in a, in a new, in a new song, song uh, called life is dangerous which is probably going to come out <laughs> in a long time from now but um, uh, so the, yeah so you could say like there's there's things from that from that song specifically mm. that we, we that we in a way started re more like um, uh, methods that we started kind sure. of re, re uh, reusing mm. I'd say that the vibe of the song the, the actual vibe of song when I listen to the song has a bit more of um, um, this vibe, yeah, right, right, right. Uh, then where we are at the moment. Okay. I don't yeah. know. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, but still, I would say it somehow represents the middle ground of some mm. of the Lima songs that are more forward going, and some of the more like uh, sort of sort of like uh, I don't know airy songs, like like for example, Black Beach, a song from the album that's composed in Madeira. Okay, that's like much more upbeat. But to me, atmosphere-wise and melodically, it has this certain airiness that, uh, like, also that uh, your heart song has. It's kind of like it's it's a rhythmic tune, but it's uh, there's very strong melodies that are sort of like um, surrounded by this this airiness and, and like space. Uh, and, and and Lima's music, I, I mean, it's it, it's really hard to define or sure. nail down in a couple of words. But I guess that that song, although it's a much more down tempo than what, what we are mostly going for, it's still like some kind of like uh, general general <laughs> representation of right, right. middle ground of what Lima could be. But, I guess, yeah. yeah. But can can you hear? Uh, <laughs> Clearly, where the, where the songs uh, were written, in in a sense, do, do your surroundings have a big influence on, on how it, songs? It's direct. Mm. It's directly. Yeah. Okay. It's like that. It's mm. like there's four songs written in Finland in the small summer cottage. There's two songs written in Berlin. Uh, in Berlin, we wrote uh, Russians and we wrote Five Thirteen. In Istanbul, we wrote Roger Waters and You Stayed in Touch with the Wrong Guy. In Madeira, we wrote America. Black and we wrote Black beats, and we kind of remember for all of the songs. I remember exactly where where the okay. songs were starting, like the Wheat Yara yeah. song, like Your sure. Heart started with the Wheat Yara, yeah. and uh, the initial idea or some kind of uh, yeah. inspiration for it. Yeah, and Roger Waters started with like a beat, and this kind of like this kind of like kind of awkward beat, and then going. Crazy in that, and then it was. When did the title come in? Then? It came in because the next thing that came in after what they did, they Rasmus looked uh, up. Uh, well, I think we were talking a lot in, in Istanbul. The song is from Istanbul. We mm. we talked a lot about Pink Floyd and time and um, being like time being such a weird concept and sure. time and music is also you know closely related. And then for some reason I don't know, Rasmus kind of like needed some inspiration. He kind of looked up. <laughs> Uh, Pink Floyd songs and yeah. tried to find a kind of Roger Waters riff or something like that. And he found this like eight notes riff and he just cut it down to five notes. So it's like do, 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 do. And then the, the kind of four beats kind of roll, so it kind of creates this thing that There's constantly like turns. Rhythmic layers and yeah. the time layers in the yeah. song. And when we were done with the, uh, with the song, and and it that was actually we were we were for a while we were thinking of calling the album History of Time, okay. which we then figured was a little bit too epic. <laughs> With the gold on top of the mountain, <laughs> just like well, so, yeah. I, I wrote down History of Time because that, yeah. that's one of the lyrics. So when yeah. when do the lyrics come in? Is it always afterwards, or at least on this project? A little bit while. I mean. It, I've always been si like with Efteklang as well. I've always been singing while writing music, okay. so it, it's it's um, it's it's all. I always find it um, comfortable singing uh, on whatever. I, mm. My problem mm. is sometimes to remember things and uh, what I did. So I think for 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 this as well, we would like when we would create the music, we would be in the space with all of our like our setup, and it would be the same setup we take take out live. So everything's like one to one, mm -hmm. and we create the music and then I sing like as they are playing. Exactly. Way. To me, 
you uh, uh, improvising on lyrics or taking lyrics out of your notebook or back of your mind is the same way as I'm using the surrounding sounds uh, the sampling wise. Mm. So I'm collecting different uh, samples of sounds from say Madeira, the flip-flop sounds or sure. some kind of sand sound or crickets and make them a hi-hat sound or something and finger play mm -hmm. it on a sampler. And Casper many times what he does is just like he comes in and we just start playing, creating a new song and he just sings these amazing like lines and you're like, w but where the fuck did this come from? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. so, so did you write this in, in the hotel room last night? No, I just wrote a few lines while I had this nice uh, ice cream and I walked <laughs> down, the, down the street. So he uses l lyrics in this very like creative way and I've, I've never seen anybody, any singer y using uh, words in such a free way. Mm. So it's really, uh, it also feels inspiring and liberating to see that you don't have to be tied to the lyrics or prepare them at home and it's not about whether I remembered all the lines that I wrote, it's like really there's a channel that comes from here out and it's ever changing. You can mm. change the words as you can change any sound in a beat.